Hey everybody, this is Larry Koval broadcasting live from the Wycliffe Italian American Club where we're here at the 37th annual Cleveland Challenge Cup of Bocce. And uh, I'm going to get the club president, Charlie Albertone, to talk a little bit about the tournament. I can grab him over here. Charlie, the tournament, 37th annual. Been a crazy weekend as usual, a lot of hard work. Your thoughts on how the tournament has gone? I think it's been great. Uh, the ladies uh, championship game is going on right now. We're about to start the uh, uh, championship game for the men, uh, the open division as well. It's uh, it was a little hot, obviously, uh, this weekend, but I think everybody stayed hydrated and uh, we did a good job. Yeah, I noticed there were uh, the the heat got to a lot of people over the weekend, especially uh, Friday and Saturday night. You know, we had a few uh, rules challenges that uh, got a little contemptuous, but. You know, overall, what do you think? Uh, any surprises? No, I, I, I mean, you know, you, you, you wish that certain situations didn't happen, I agree. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, everything cooler heads prevailed and uh, everything was fine. And in the heat of competition, that stuff happens, you know. Anybody you want to thank in particular? I, I, I would like to thank all of our club members. They've been amazing throughout this whole weekend. It takes, a, it takes an army to put on this tournament, if you can imagine. Months and months of preparation, hours and hours of work during uh, during the week and leading up to the tournament, um, and specifically Paul DeSico, who will not be interviewed right now be because he lost his voice, but he is our tournament director. Uh, he has really embraced the uh, so so since I'm the, been the president, I've really tried to have the sustainability and uh, uh, the the future vision. Uh, um, uh, goal going forward and he really embraced it and 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 we're in good shape going forward so um, with that being said I mean I think the other we, 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 we tried a couple different things this year that that I think were well received we, we tried the field passes which was awesome um, and then the other thing we did was a bracket reveal so really what I would like to do is introduce our tournament director, I mean our, our bracket director, uh, Frank Gambatis, and he could talk a little bit about that situation. That sounds great. Frank, come on over. Thanks, Charlie. So, the big bracket reveal, that went pretty well. I think it was pretty well received. What do you think? Oh, I think it was awesome. I had several players this year come up to us and just tell us how much they enjoyed it. Um, and they were just really excited the way we did it, getting to see the bracket come up on screen. and. Uh, I think everybody really enjoyed what we did for that. Yeah, I thought it was pretty unique. And, and sponsors, if you're listening out there, we can use a sponsor for it next year, right? And um, any surprises in how the tournament has, has played out this, so far? Yeah, you know, we had we had a couple of, real, of local teams make a, a couple of really deep runs this year, which is always really fun to see. It's, it's you know, from the club specifically. Um, you know, Fit Technology, just a couple of really great runs from some local teams. Um, and but you know what at the end of the day we've got in the championship game we've got abv our favorite here once again um they did they are gonna have to do it the hard way again but they're returning champs for a reason so i'm um, very excited to see how this plays out here uh, yeah, those guys have such a unique chemistry it seems like they're always picking each other up i mean you've seen them now how many how many uh cleveland challenge cups have they they won They've won three, they've run it up once, they've third placed once, so they're very familiar to this territory playing late in the tournament. So uh, they're definitely going to be ready, and they've, they've let, just last year they came from the loser's bracket and had to beat the team twice. So again, this is, this is not foreign to them. They are going to be ready to play. Those guys got ice water in their veins. And what about uh, the, the team that they're playing, Coda? What do you know about them? Yeah, Coda, I know they're a mixture of guys from Rome, and I think uh, the Rochester area... Um, you know, I don't know a ton about them. We, my team actually played them a couple of years ago. They are a soft team, obviously, to make it all the way through the winner's bracket undefeated. So they're, go they're going to be a formidable opponent, and they actually are the ones that put ABV in the loser's bracket. So uh, you got a little revenge factor game here as well. So it's going to be really exciting, but they're obviously a really quality team. Yeah, I know Luciano interviewed them uh, earlier, so when, when he goes on, he'll, uh, I'm sure, fill us in a little bit about what he found out about them. But um, got any predictions for this game coming up? I, you know, one, one prediction I have for sure is that it's going to be a good game. Um, you know, picking the winner is always going to be really tough. It's like picking the lottery, I guess. But because it, it, we always say any given Sunday here, uh, we're actually on Sunday. But, yeah, any given Sunday, we just don't know. So it's, it, But it's going to be a good game, I'm sure. 
I'm sure it is. Those guys, yeah, like you said, they they play tough over there in New York, and uh, but so does ABV. And until somebody beats them, I think. Uh, Personally, I'm going to bet on them. <laughs> I, I don't disagree at all. I, I, you got to unseat the champ for us to have any other indicator of what might happen. So I agree. All right. Well, thanks, Frank. And uh, we, the championship game should be coming up in a couple minutes then, right? Yep. Yeah, we we'll, should be getting underway five, ten minutes tops, I would say. So very soon. Sounds good. Thank you. Serpentini Chevrolet is proud to serve residents and guests in Northeast Ohio. They strive to deliver the best car buying experience in the Cleveland area by having the largest selection of Chevrolets in Northeast Ohio and having a large team of friendly and experienced sales, service, and finance professionals. They are thankful that their customers have made them the number one selling Chevy dealer in Northeast Ohio, and they make it their goal to continue delivering unmatched customer service. Minutemen Staffing has been helping companies large and small meet their production challenges for more than 50 years. With a pool of thousands of screened applicants, they can support your company with employees who have the skills needed to get the job done right, ranging from general labor to skilled machine operators. The Minutemen Human Resource System has offices in Illinois, Michigan, Ohio, and Wisconsin, including Cleveland, Chicago, Columbus, Cincinnati, and Detroit. For more information, go to www.minutemeninc.com. 188 Ohio Com proudly serves Ohio's employers and injured workers. They commit their resources and staff to provide exceptional customer service, aggressive medical case management, and quality health care focused on an early and safe return to work. Serving over 60,000 employers, 1888 Ohio Comp aggressively manages workers' compensation claims to ensure quality, cost effective medical treatment, and return to work services. Call 188 Ohio Comp to see how they can help your business. MCR Marketing Communications Resources is your communication partner, including print, mail, creative, strategy, and data. MCR is committed to providing clients with an excellent customer service experience and highly competitive rates that influence ROI. They know that your constituents want to hear from you and they make it possible through a wide range of direct marketing strategies and services personalized to fit your needs. Owned by club member Dominic Puno, we thank them for printing our program book and posters again this year. If you're looking for Italian food and specialty items, you'll want to check out Alessi's of Shoregate for those things you just can't find anywhere else. Father and son, Antonio and Paolo Guerreri, both members of our club, will give you the personal service and the best quality on the east side of Cleveland. They have a large selection of imported food as well as homemade pasta dishes, pizza, salads, and wine. You'll love their bakery too for fresh baked Italian bread and pastries. Check out their Facebook page for weekly specials, Aleshi's of Shoregate. Okay, well, here we are, uh, Luch, back at the... Uh Cleveland Challenge Cup of Bocce, and after a year off, we're back at it, and ABV contractors are in a familiar position once again, and against uh, Coda Corp, and I'm Bob Galise, along with Luciano Desenzi. Yes, thank you, Bob. We're going to bring you the game, and uh, the first ball, there it is, uh, by Domaveni, I think, if I was looking right. Huh? They might be warming up here first to begin. Yeah, so you're right. It is they a warm-up, yeah. yeah. I wasn't warm paying up. attention. We're going to go down and up real quick and warm up, and then we'll get started with the finals. So, Coda Corp, it's a New York uh, team, right, uh, from uh, Rockport? Uh, Lockport, I'm sorry, Lockport, right? Uh, yeah, in the area, yep. Okay. And you got Paul Lewis, uh, Jr., who, who's just shooting the ball right there. And Paul Lewis has been around quick a test. long time. Test, test. Um, what is that? I don't even, what's it? What's it? New York off? Let's do it. Testing, there. testing. Oh, okay. All right. And uh, I can hear that. Testing, testing. Hello, Frank. Hey, there you guys are. Okay, I see you now. <laughs> hey, all right, I'm here. <laughs> we're doing a little check with our uh, on-court commentator, Frank Gabbathies. Yes, we're here. We're live. All right, Frank. Frank's all ready to go. And then you got uh, Bill Rosenberg. Keep who's talking. Sta who's oh. standing up on the board. Yes. No, no more testing. <laughs> sorry. Nate. I, okay. I'm getting mixed messages. I'm sorry. I'm that's done. all right. I'm done. I, I get a lot of mixed messages all week, so that's good. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so Mike Seraph and John Valella for uh, Coda Corp. And who's on uh, ABV, uh, Luch? Uh, we have uh, Don Levenny, Dan Dennis Sternad. We have Anthony Croce and Mikey Ferbato. All right. 
And everybody, uh, they are the defending champs in this tournament. So they're going to try to defend their title here in the finals. Uh, but they are coming on the loser's bracket. Yeah, that's so right. They need to win twice to get the title. And this is the same situation they were in two years ago when we had the tournament in the Cleveland Challenge Kobabachi, the 36th year. Now on the 37th, they're in the exact same position, coming on the loser's bracket, and they need to win twice to win the title. Well, I'll tell you what. The uh, <laughs> ABV, they've done this. They've been in this position so many times. They don't get afraid of it. They don't get nervous about it. They just play it. It's kind of amazing to, to watch these guys. Even when they're down, they just keep plugging away. So it's going to be a good game. Uh, we played uh, Coda Corp today, and uh, they beat us. I think it was 14-11, I believe. Um, and they just they're, they got a couple of good hitters on the team, especially Paul Lewis. Uh, their, their lead pointer, Billy who's right there on the board on the right there. I don't know if you can see it on, uh, on your video or not, but um, he's, he's been around a long time, and that guy, he's a, he's a point maniac. Yeah, you uh, did a good run yourself there, Bob. Yeah, yeah. We ended up in fourth, uh, had a lot of fun uh, with uh, Tim Trepepe, Dan Trepepe, and Steve Morgano. Had a good time, and, uh, you know, a couple things changed here and there. You know, maybe we're in second. I don't know if we're, we would have got to the finals, but it had been fun to play in, in this uh type of environment but nonetheless uh, we're going to bring you the uh, broadcast and <laughs> hopefully uh Croach is not measuring with a cigarette again this year <laughs> uh, we'll find out <laughs> uh Croach, one of a kind what's that yeah oh yeah yeah the three of the guys bill mike and john are from the uh, short street bocce club so i believe they have a, a watch party going on right now a lot of their family and friends are kind of hanging out watching these guys compete. Hopefully, uh, see they win a championship and bring it back home. All right, so a shout out to Short Street Bocce Club back in New York. Uh, probably drinking some Pepsi, some lemonade. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Looks like ABV won the toss and they chose red. They're going to roll first here. All right, here we go. And away we go. There's here is the Cleveland Challenge Club of Bocce Finals as we begin, 37th annual. Look at that roll right there. That's very nice. Here's Dom Leveni. What a nice ball in there by Dom. Start He's done that a few times in his life, huh? <laughs> Mr. Mr. Cool and Calm. Oh, nice shot there. It was probably Paul Lewis. I don't know exactly who hit it, but usually Paul is the first hitter. Yeah, it was Paul right there. Yeah. We want to make sure we let everybody know also the championship matches are to 16. So they're playing up to 16. All weekend we were playing a 14 with the championship match. It's a 16 points. All right. You can see, you can see uh, the scoreboard down at the bottom of your screen. Uh, oh, that's an that's an addition this year, right? We didn't have the score like uh, on the bottom of the screen, did we? Last, last time, did. did we? I think so. Huh? Not embedded. Not embedded. Okay. All right. So cool. Yeah. So now the score is going to be embedded. We got a point there by Bill. Which approach he's going to line up to hit this. Nice hit by Crouch. Look at that. Yeah. Two red now. This goes. <laughs> right now it's too red. Maybe potential hit hit play. Yeah. I, the balls can stick around, but we'll see what um Mike will do here for his point. I know Mikey Ferbata can hit. And of course Dennis is still back. He's a one of the best hitters in the era area. Oh, Mike ball's a little long in there. Now, okay, the gentleman just threw is that Mike Seraph? Seraph? Seraph, yes. Seraph, okay, that's Mike. Okay. Yes. All these names this weekend. You know, you don't see people for a year and a half, and then all of a sudden you're trying to remember all their names. Right. <laughs> Look at this right here. Look at that. Pauline. Hey. Very nice, Mike. Just skimmed by that Pauline. Paul Lewis is giving a signal to point. To protect here. So is this uh, John Valella? Yes, yeah. I'm okay. Okay. Yeah, John reminded me earlier today. He says, yeah, a couple years ago, Bob, when you were in Rome... We were beating you 11 to 2. You guys ended up beating us, and you kept beating 12 inch points. <laughs> he said, I couldn't stand you. <laughs> Good guy, man. It was, just, it was just really nice to see everybody again and see the whole venue filled up again with people. It was hot, as hot as can be. Right, it was a very hot weekend. But nonetheless, it was great to see everyone. It looks like John rolled in, he was just a bit long. So ABV has the point, and Dennis is going to try to come in here and capitalize, but he rolls long on that one. So we get one ABV to 
start this uh, All right, there we 37th go. annual Cleveland Challenge to Hibachi Finals, sponsored by Serpentini Chevrolet. Serpentini. <laughs> and it's a uh, matter of fact, they had a. See so what they have? Yeah, they had a couple. So the cars here this weekend. People were checking them out. Trucks and cars sitting out here. That one truck. Is this? Is that the one I'm thinking of? That black one. Silver, Silverado. Yeah. Beautiful Silverado. man. What a beautiful truck. All right. There's Dom doing what he does. Nice ball, Dom. There's Paul Lewis. Of course, that's Paul Lewis Jr. and his son is Paul Lewis the yes. third, who's also here. Was a hit. Ooh, nice uh -huh. hit there. Got the Pauline, Pauline also. Pauline went with it. Now it's a race to the back wall. Where did Pauline go? Back in the corner? Yeah, it's in the far right corner there. Oh, okay. Good shot by Paul there. Yeah, Paul's a solid player. Always has been. Good guy. These guys have been playing for a long time also. I know they're... Uh, it, seemed, it was Paul, Bill, and John. They've been playing a couple times in this tournament over the years. And... The highest finish was seventh place. So this is the first time they're in the finals. Oh wow! How exciting for uh, for all these guys. Right. Wow. Yeah, I know Billy is, uh, you know, their pointer and Paul. I, I've I've seen them. I remember them the most. Um, but yeah, they're always they're always in the running. But you're right; they've never gotten there. With this tournament, I, I don't I don't think many other tournaments either. But uh, good to see. Paul has won Rome before. No. Has he? Yeah, he has one row. Ooh. Bills came in second. I believe John said he finished around seventh place. Oh, so there you go. Yeah, these guys, they, yeah, they're always there. So we got the experience. Let's see if they're going to pull together here to see if they can get their first championship here in Liquid. Let's see, they're playing on uh, court five, right? Correct. Yeah, court five here at the Wycliffe Italian American Club in Wycliffe, Ohio. And the score is one nothing. ABB is currently holding point. That was, that was Michael Fabon's uh, last roll, and you guys can see the, the crowd in the background. As Mike lines up for his point. Well, thank God it cooled off. And here comes his roll. Uh, it's got the distance. Run uh, off that red ball. It looks like it wasn't enough. I believe it's ABV's point still. Yeah, just a little short. <coughs> ABV is holding point. All right, so here comes John and try and uh, take that point away. Frank Gambatis on the, uh, the on-court commentator is looking at the play close up. There goes his roll. It's got some speed on it. Head into the corner, see if the hole its line. It just touched the back wall. And we'll get the point. Great ball by John right there. That was because sometimes that court tends to push that ball away from the side. Definitely, right? and it's very important to, as a pointer, you got to be able to read your courts. Yeah. Where, where yeah. are the lines? How's the walls coming off? Is there a little hill over here, a little hill over there? Is it going to slide in? Is it going to fall in? Those are important things, especially when you're going to the back ball in the distance. You got to be able to pull the lines and have the correct speed when you're uh, trying to get back there. Yeah, there was a couple of times today that, uh, you know, trying to point along a wall and just to get the ball to stop there it was couldn't you couldn't get it to stop it just kept falling out right and that's without touching the wall you know to make it pop out even further all right so it looks like Croach is what's he going to do is he going to hit i think he's contemplating hitting With two balls in the back we still got dennis after coach shoots so we'll see what happens if he maybe maybe coach here shoots it tries to open it up a little bit and let dennis come into the point discussion right down there they discuss what they want to do all right now he's gonna roll in okay it's kind of what you would expect them to do he goes Croce uh, rocking the Jordans the gold chain as he throws <laughs> oh wow put some uh, speed on that it's jumped over uh, yeah, that ball the green ball right there that really popped up he didn't throw it that hard yeah, that ball hit Pauline dead center and Jet took a nice hop right over their ball. So here comes Dennis now. And he seems to be strong also. 
Yeah. Yeah, they nudged Paulino over to the green ball. One point oh, green there. He hit the he hit the Paulino uh, Frank. Yeah, he nudged the, he hit right into the uh, Paulino, right into the Coda ball, so one point green. Okay. So the score, this will be today's scorekeeper. So it's one one. Coda court and A B V. Uh oh. And there comes Bill, he goes up the right side wall to Pauline. So that was another rule change this year, Luch, is the you get one throw of the Pauline and if you aren't twelve inches off the wall or you're beyond the, the longest green line. Uh, the other team gets to throw the Pauline, and then you still throw your point ball. So that's what just got done happening. Dom threw the Paulino for uh, Bill, because Bill's ball was uh, not 12 inches off the uh, the sideboard. So, uh, uh, short, I don't know, three and a half feet. It's a great line down the middle, but it's going to leave it open for Dom to point. There's Paul Lewis, the third in the blue shirt. Obviously, the son of Paul Lewis Jr. Here comes Dom. Sliding right by, uh, but he's got some speed. Can't tell. I'm going to go down there and check and measure, then I see. Nice crowd today. Yeah. Looks like it's tight. Here comes the measurement team. Okay. Chris and Oliver are acting as our official measurement team for this championship game. Oh, man. They're going to work. What a duo. All right, so it's still 1 1. The measurement coming up, and it's red ball, red point right now. So then he steals the point there. So Coda. Coda Corp has to uh, throw their ball. I'm sure there are fans at uh, Short Street Bocce Club are yelling and screaming. <laughs> and here we go. And here comes his ball for Point. On his own ball, bumps it up. Maybe two. Nice bump up there. It was a nice roll by Mike. So do you take a uh, aim between the both of those, Luch, and maybe get them both out of there? I think there's a possibility. I think Coach is going to be trying to see who's lining up the point ball right now. Step shot. Gets it out. Pauline goes with it at the back wall. Ooh, he falls it right off. Oh, nice, nice shot. shot. Nice shot, Coach. Great hit. Look at that. Wow. Yeah, that's not going to be easy to uh, overtake that point. But I'm sure Mr. Lewis will do his best. Paul Lewis, off one of the, he only plays at Rome. That's his uh, his home his home courts. Yeah, yeah. Down over there. Yeah. Um, talking with these guys before a little interview with them. I guess uh, the Short Street Bocce Club and, and the Tupelana Club have a lot of events between each other. They're about three hours apart, and a lot of the guys go back and forth and play at each other's club. Oh, nice. It's kind of a little uh, nice incentive that they constantly go back and forth and you know at each other's places and have little games and tournaments and everything. Yeah, until you mentioned it today, I hadn't heard of Short Street. Uh, bocce club and, yeah. you know, until you until you brought it up today, so that, that's interesting. Three hours away, yeah, that's that's a little bit of a drive, but not it's bad. On the west side of New York. Okay. Here, here's his roll now. John's roll to the back wall. Uh oh. Wow, look at that ball wow. Boy, he didn't throw it that hard either. Well, ABV still holding point after Croce's nice shot. Paul Lewis up the side wall. Same thing back wall play, but it's going to come off too much right there. Yeah. Gucci's, uh hit to point is going to pull right now. There's Dennis's mother, Sylvia, watching the action. As are Mike Monaco and Kathy and uh, Anthony Fanucci, Baranacci. Now, kind of discuss what they want to do here. To all right, we've got a roll in by Mikey now. Let's see. Uh, uh oh, I hear clapping. I can't see the uh, the ball yet, but look at that ball oh. right there. Yeah, it looks oh. like it's pretty close. 
Yeah, well, Croce's ready to measure. Tell him to hurry up with that cigarette. <laughs> we need that. There's another one. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, no. Dennis just rolled in and bumped in the balls. Yeah, he bumped into the ball, but it ABV held point. So one point for ABV just there. one. So they're trying to go for three there, try to get three points on that, but it looks like uh, Green Balls had a nice little defense in the front, blocking it up. Yeah. So they were only to give up one point, so now it's two to one ABV. All right, Dama Veni, uh, yeah, okay, that ball ended up better than I thought it was going to. Took that left-hand turn and settled in nicely. Looks to be about two, two and a half feet in front. Yeah. We'll have Paul Lewis lining up for a shot. So you to do here. Yeah, Paul loves to hit. That's his first choice is to hit it and get it out of there. And he got it. Looks like the Pauline moved with it. And it caught a corporal. Looks like they have the point. And here comes ABV. Nice roll off the side, but it's going to be, oof. That wall just kind of sucked it up right there. Short ball by Mikey Ferbata. Looks like Bill will try to capitalize on that. And here goes Bill. And he's going to the wall, too. Oh, he, oh can he get too. past? <laughs> Looks like he's going to be short, too. All right, well, ABV is going to hold the point. Looks like Bill's ball was short. Paul Lewis is discussing on the court trying to figure out what he wants to do next. Looks like their point ball is not in a good position. We're going to need something here. And Mike is uh, stepping up and uh, getting into the bullpen, getting ready to throw. We'll see what he does here. Looks like he's going to try to hit a little earlier. And he just he got it right past Bob. Look at that right there. That was a close call right there. I don't know if he was going after his own ball or not, but... He made his own point, so. But with nice speed on it, got past the, the red ball, and now they're holding point. But you know who's coming up right now is going to be uh, Croach line up for a shot. Not, not, not right now. And look at shot right there by Croach. I'm Incredible shot. Where, 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 where'd the Pauline go? It's right behind still, that ball. Oh, it's still right there. Yep. Okay. He just moved it around a little bit, but his ball stuck around, so it's a nice hit and stick there by Croach. Nice. The gangsta of Bocce, <laughs> Anthony Croach. And here comes John now. He's going to go after that ball. And it hits his own ball, moves it up a little bit, but it's going to be room there for uh, for Dennis to point in. So right now, ABV on the Pauline. Dennis now trying to figure out what he wants to do and what line he wants to take to get this point and try to get uh, two points out of the inning. Well, it looks like, uh, well, you know, Croach had that shot, and Coda's uh, out of balls, right, uh, Luch? Yeah. Yes. Yep. We were having a little glitch on the TV here and lost my attention for a minute. Mr. Excavator is a family-owned and operated excavating contractor headquartered in Kirtland, Ohio, with a regional office in Columbus, Ohio, that is adept at handling all facets of site development and road work. With over 50 years of experience, a versatile fleet of well-maintained and reliable earth-moving equipment, and a resourceful pool of knowledgeable, skilled labor, we can handle a wide range of excavation projects in Ohio and neighboring states. For more information, go to www.mrexcavator.com. Second year as stage sponsor is Hesh Sagafi of Liberty Home Mortgage, a local lender that is honest, responsive, and provides answers quickly, educates clients about the various loan products, and helps them through the process to qualify for a loan that meets their needs, works closely with real estate agents to get a deal closed on time. Contact Hesh Shagafi of Liberty Home Mortgage at 216-780-1103. Orlando Donsante Private Funeral Home, serving the city of Wycliffe and surrounding communities in Lake Cuyahoga and Joga County since 1954, 
takes great pride in showing care and compassion for the many families they serve and will work tirelessly to provide you with a beautiful, lasting tribute to your loved one. They have a great range of resources to support you, not only today, but in the weeks, months, and years to come. Please call owner and funeral director Anthony Previtt at 440-943-2466 for your family's funeral, cremation, and prearrangement service needs. The Sherwin-Williams Company delivers the best in paint and coatings products to the world. Every day, our more than 60,000 employees provide the energy and experience to build on our track record of success, enabling us to innovate and grow in new and exciting ways. With our people as the foundation of our company, we offer industry-leading innovation, value-added service and expertise, and differentiated distribution to our growing base of professional, industrial, commercial, and consumer customers. Sherwin-Williams, bringing color to the world for more than 150 years. Everybody knows Coke. They are a total beverage company. From their passion for what people want, they bring people everywhere, more of the brands they love. From one brand to over 500, that's Coca-Cola and so much more. That sun is is, is uh, setting and it's coming right between that blanket and, and the uh, top of the uh, little gazebo that we're under. It's absolutely blinding me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it'll... It'll be down in about five minutes and be on that cover looks, they have up. Well, it looks like Bill threw there. His point is a little bit long, so it's still going to be ABV's point. So Paul Lewis is trying to discuss with his teammates, trying to figure out what they want to do here. So so Paul and Bill are going to have a little powwow about the next shot as uh, Mike and John stay back to uh, discuss with their what they enjoy doing at this point. Can you guys hear Frank? No. No. Okay. Hmm. We were. Everything was there fine. goes Paul to the shot. He clips Dom's ball and gets it out. Got it out of there. Good shot by Paul, but it does leave it open. So Mikey now will step up and uh, roll in for point now. Well, it's nice. Uh, David Sullivan and his crew put together a nice video uh, for you know to allow us to broadcast this. You know, for all the fans of Bocce, you we're having a couple glitches here and there where we can't hear Frank right now, who is the on-court commentator. But they'll get it worked out. David's a pretty smart guy. And here goes Mike now for his point, trying to steal it. Looks at the ball to lay on it right there. He did. Great ball there by Mike Seraph. All right, so now do you hit that? You try to hit that green ball and take yours with it? Because then it leaves their other point, their other green point there. And that's a big ball by Mike because the placement of the ball, if it goes, it is, the red ball is going to go with it. Right. So that's... it's not going to be an easy shot. I mean, you really have to clip it on the side of it for it to go without touching that red ball, but that's a tough shot. But yeah, we'll see what Dennis wants to do here. Well... The thing is, too, the balls are behind the Pauline, so a play is also to kind of point, maybe? Well, tell me, you just it. lay on it. But it is a tough point. Mike did make it uh, within a foot, so it's it's a tough one to get. So you see ABV discussing now what they want to do. So what is it? Is it three balls to, I mean, uh, two balls to one right now? Yes. Yeah, Kroji has his, Dennis has his ball. Okay. And then uh, Coda has one ball left? Uh, yeah, one, one ball, ball left. Yep, just John. John has his ball still. Okay. And there's John now. There's Bill now. Talking yeah, to Paul. Bill and Paul, yeah. Bill and Paul talking. Yeah. And I forget the gentleman's name sitting to the right in the pink shirt. Great guy. Yeah, it's a team that knocked us out of the uh, out of the tournament. Really good guys. It looks like ABV's going to decide to hit this. Let's see what Croach does here. He fires. Hits and gets them both out. And I guess the play is for them to hit that, open it up, and let Dennis roll in, and then put it on John to see if he can get the ball out. Yeah, and I watched, you know, when we played uh, Coda, uh, John hit a couple balls. I mean, he's not a pure hitter, but he can hit. It's kind of funny. They were talking to me earlier in the interview that uh, John's big hit of the weekend 
uh, was against ABV to win the game when they played earlier. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right, because Coda played ABV and beat him, huh? Yep, earlier today. They're, they're the ones who put uh, who put uh, ABV in the loser's bracket. Yes. No. So Dennis on the point there. He was rolling too long. So here comes John trying to roll in for two. He's happy with it. You can see this. He's pumped right there. And there we go. We got a three to three ball game. So great inning by Coda Corp. Did they get two or one? They got two on that one. So it should, uh -oh. so it should be three two Coda? Three three. Yeah, it's 3-3. Three, 3-3, three. Three, three, yep. Yeah. So great inning there by the... It's nice to have a young mind that can remember things, Luch, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I try my best, I guess. This CRS is ridiculous. <laughs> so here goes Bill now for his first point of the inning as uh, Katakorp holds the, the Pauline. Nice roll there. Look at that ball in the front. All right, nice ball. Nice ball. Very smooth off the... Off the first point, but it leaves a window open for Croach. Anthony Croach, ladies and gentlemen, up to get rid of that ball. And fires. Oh, bang, hits that right there. Uh, now the balls are rolling. And that right night, that green ball went in the co right corner. Yeah, I just don't know where, how far back it Bill is. Bill was just pointing to the red ball, so they're going to go check it out and see who has it. But another great shot by Croach right there. Yeah, Croach don't... don't he doesn't miss many. <laughs> Neither does Dennis. <clears throat> All these guys, solid team, man. When these guys finally figured out, you know, to play with each other many years back, they put together a really nice team. Two really good hitters, two really good pointers, who can also hit when they're called on. Uh oh. Ooh, that's Mike's ball right there, just uh, well short. So we'll leave a big window open for uh, Mikey for to come in. Or for Dom to come in. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, here he comes off that uh, that wall, just gliding, and it will fall in. So it holds point. Good point by Dom right there. Look at Paul getting uh, giving the signal to shoot. So here goes Paul Lewis. Probably lining up the Pauline. The ball hits it. Oh, oh the Pauline goes with it, though. Oh, oh. oh man. Bad break. It's a tough break by there. Paul hit a shot, but the... They clipped the red ball that went onto the Pauline and now pushed that Pauline to the back wall. But great hit by Paul, uh, Paul, Paul right there. Can you guys see, talk to Frank see if you can hear him. Frank, are you out there? Hey, Frank. Yep, I'm here. Oh, can you hear me? Okay, yeah. Yeah, hey, all right. Okay, we're back in business. Excellent. How's things looking out there, Frank? <laughs> looking good, looking good. We got two points for ADV right now. Coda's a little bit in trouble this frame. After that, uh, after that hit by Paul, yeah, kind of put them in bad shape. As these guys are discussing what they want to do now. Croach has got his Alta House shirt on. For those of you who are not familiar with that, uh, you know, the short, the short street bocce club folks, that's uh, Alta House. Has been around since, I don't know, like 1907 or something like that. I think that was Rockefeller's daughter. Her name was Ulta. And uh, they named this, um, uh, after he built the home and then donated it, it's called the Ulta House. It's still there on Murray Hill, which is Little Italy, here in Cleveland. And we have tournaments there, typically run by Mike Sapulo and his gang. And uh, always a good time down there. Obviously, the, uh, the aroma it couldn't be any better. All the Italian food going on. The Feast of uh, Little Italy. Feast of the Assumption, I should say, in Little Italy. Uh, just happened a couple weeks ago. And a lot of people, great turnout. A lot of vendors. And again, uh, uh, that's the first year and in, in, uh, the first time in a couple years, year and a half. Well, let's see, they missed last year, Feast of the Assumption, and they came back this year. So they missed one year, right? Yes, yep. And they weren't sure if they were going to be able to have it this year, but it finally went, went on and... Turned out to be a great event, Luch. Did you, did you happen to go down? Were you down there? Yes, yep. I was down there for the Alta House tournament. Uh, it was a great event. It was uh, a lot of people fun. were yeah, down there. It was crowded. It was crowded. Yeah. 
I wonder but, where, uh, like, in, like near Rome, I, I, you know, in Lockport. I wonder where their little Italy is, if they have one up in that area or not. Or near Short Street, Bocce Club. and just might whatever. just be Little Italy in uh, just New York, just downtown. Just, yeah. I, I know they have one in, we talking about New York City? Is yeah. that what you mean? Yeah. Well, yeah, I know they have that there. But I just wonder if, like, in these outlying suburbs, like Lockport and... Uh, I forget the name of it. What's the city that uh, you said uh, Short Short Street Bocce Club is in? I believe it's... Is it New... New Fane? New or Fane? I th- maybe might have to double check on that one to see. Uh, maybe somebody can post it if they're watching this broadcast, but... They do have a Facebook group, too, so... Oh, yeah, yeah. Good idea. You can definitely find more information about their club also on there. One point. It looks like Dom rolled in. Late on the ball. Croce has got a one finger up. Hope it's the index finger. Oh, it is. Okay, good. <laughs> oh, my Lord. It's been a long weekend, man. I'm getting a little punchy, I guess. <laughs> it was hot. Holy mackerel, was it hot on those courts. We've got a nice breeze going right now, oh, but all weekend long is just... Uh, yeah, a hot heat. So we definitely give credit to all the teams that, 101 teams that came out this weekend, played in the tournament. It was a long weekend of uh, intense battles, long games, great points and hits, and here we are now with the final two teams going at it. So, 2021, the 37th. Cleveland Challenge Cup of Bocce. There's a roll. Yes. Look at that ball right there. Wow, what Beautiful. a point. Big Very. roll by Dennis right there. Very nice. There's Dennis's mom, Sylvia, clapping for her little boy. Oh, he's not a little boy anymore. And they're going to be trying to look, see if they got three on that, because I think he just bumped it enough out. That's what I was thinking. And here comes Chris. And they given two. They're going to measure for the third. Okay. So two points now. Serpentini Chevrolet is proud to serve residents and guests in Northeast Ohio. They strive to deliver the best car buying experience in the Cleveland area by having the largest selection of Chevrolets in Northeast Ohio and having a large team of friendly and experienced sales, service, and finance professionals. They are thankful that their customers have made them the number one selling Chevy dealer in Northeast Ohio, and they make it their goal to continue delivering unmatched customer service. Bear Insurance is a local, family-owned, and operated insurance company located in Menor, Ohio. Bear Insurance has been in operation for over 14 years, and they have won numerous customer service awards. As your life changes with either retirement or young kids starting to drive, Bear Insurance lives up to their motto, We Care at Bear, and they will be with you every step of the way. You can find Bear Insurance online at bearinsurance.com. They look forward to welcoming you to the Bear family. Minutemen Staffing has been helping companies large and small meet their production challenges for more than 50 years. With a pool of thousands of screened applicants, they can support your company with employees who have the skills needed to get the job done right, ranging from general labor to skilled machine operators. The Minutemen Human Resource System has offices in Illinois, Michigan, Ohio, and Wisconsin, including Cleveland, Chicago, Columbus, Cincinnati, and Detroit. For more information, go to www.minutemeninc.com. Janelle Tessa, owner of JL Hair Artistry, has over 14 years' experience in the beauty industry and was recently honored to be Modern Salon Top 100 Hairstylist for 2019. Her specialty is blondes and balayage, and she is always following the latest hair coloring trends and education so she can not only be creative with the new hair trends and fashion, but also make others feel a true sense of happiness inside and out. Follow her on Instagram at Hair by Janelle Latessa, or find her on Facebook and Twitter JL Hair Artistry, hashtag JL Hair Artistry. Uh-oh. Well, we quick lull in the action. We just uh, saw Bottiglieri's Ladies Lawn Care uh, win the Women's Championship Oh yeah. right behind yeah. us on Court 8. Wow, that's their third in a row, Bob. Four in five years, yeah. Is it really? Very impressive. And they uh, beat the local team, and I'm forgetting the name of them. Botched. Botched. Okay, there Mm -hmm. you go. Yeah, Dina, Julie, Lindsay, 
And I'm forgetting one, one person. And looks like three for ABV after the measure. On a big inning there by ABV, that, that rolling by Dennis. Yes. Yeah, six to three ABV. All right, and keep in mind that ABV, I know, we're, well, that's right, we're probably on commercial. Yeah, we can't hear it. It's being recorded. Okay. Without the commercial, so if you want to talk through the commercial. Okay. It's not going out to the broadcast. We've got 49 seconds till we're coming back to the broadcast. So keep in mind that ABV and I'll repeat this in a couple of times, ABV needs to win twice because they're coming out of the loser's bracket. And Coda Corp was in the winner's bracket, and they only need to win one game to take the title. So. 15 seconds. Okay. <clears throat> okay, and okay. here goes Mikey for bottom for point. So ABB up 6-3. Yeah, just nudges the ball there. Very nice. Nice ball, Mike. So like I say, in, uh, you're talking about when we went to commercial, that uh, ABV, keep in mind, needs to win twice. They're coming out of the loser's bracket. Coda only needs to win one game. Right, Luch? That is correct. What a hit by Paul right there. <clears throat> and he's been a sharpshooter all weekend long. All right, we got a roll in here, going for point, ABV. Just rolling past the Pauline. A little strong on that. So it looks like we got uh, Russ Maraglio, Frank DeSillo, Nick Dodona, Amory Rutkowski Horning, Mike Trader, Jimmy Pisano. Watching our broadcast on, on Facebook. Pretty cool. Short Street is in Lockport. Okay. Maureen Kasuba said Short Street is in Lockport. I did. I did. I, I heard it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> this measurement is brought to you by Serpentini Chevrolet. Thank you, Serpentini, for all that you've done for this tournament. And uh, we really, really appreciate it here at the Wycliffe INA. All right, so here we go. Here comes John's roll. Going to try to steal this point so he can hold that line. Oh, yeah. Just in the ball. left of it. What a great wow. ball by John. Look at that right there. Very nice. Woo! Wow. You can just see a slight crease right there by the Pauline. Great line, way to hold it. And Kata Corp gets the point there. What a great roll. And that puts another one on the board, and it's four to six, ABV with a two-point lead. Well, hey, Coda Corp's holding on there. And not, not that I think, that, not that I thought this was ever going to be any kind of blowout because it isn't either way. They're they're both two very good teams. Even their first matchup was a fourteen to twelve win by Coda Corp. Right. So it went down to the wire. Went down to the very last shot when John hit the ball to for two for the win. Yeah, and that's what I remember. It was a tight game then. Anything could have happened in that game too. So we knew this was going to be a battle between these two teams. And here comes Dom now. A little hot on it. Just past the Pauline. Ooh. It's a little too long. Let's we'll see. Oh, it's like a close. Uh, Frank, you got an eye on that one? Yeah, it looks like it just rolled out. Dom's not going to be happy about that one. So 
So two of the, the first pointers have just gone. Seems to be uh, still an open point, but Katakorp has it now. So uh, Mikey now is going to go in for a point, see if he can just get past that green ball. Playing to 16, uh, Mr. Insana. Yes, championship match to 16. All weekend it was 14, but for the finals, we're going to 16. Now, Mikey's ball is a little long, too. That skated past the Pauline also. But it looks like it's... Uh, Frank, it, uh, is that point? I know he laid on his ball. No, Dom doesn't look happy about that one. And here comes Croach to shoot. So back-to-back -back points by Dom and Mikey. Uh, no good on the point, so here comes Croach now. Throws? Oh, and a miss, miss by Croach. Yeah, well, everybody's allowed to miss one. But now that's three balls out of the ABV's hands. Dennis is going to have to put this one on to try to save the frame here. Yeah, he's got to play a little defense here, that's for sure. And with a two-point lead, you got to play smart. And he just skates past the pond lane, too. Third ball so going past the pond lane. Because it doesn't look like they're throwing the ball that hard, but it's skating past. Um, and I think the, the court the, is a little harder over there. Yeah, you see the ridge. It could kind of come up. It's kind of like a, a, a putting green, a fast green yeah, right yeah, here. Yeah. We kind of point uphill, and it slides off. Here comes uh, an example of another new rule this year, measure any time. Ah, there you go. So as Frank just mentioned, uh, you know, in years past, if a uh, another team uh, doesn't have a ball back, uh, you couldn't measure. But this year, you can measure any time for any reason, but only the first point. You can't measure second points and third points, only the first point. Right, Luch? Correct. Does that make sense? So another new rule. So besides the one throw of the Pauline rule, there was also the measure any time rule that was uh, put into effect here at the right. Wycliffe INA, the uh, Cleveland Challenge Cup of Bocce. It uh, looked like it was ABV point by an eighth right now. So Dennis got the point, but it, it's, it's behind the Pauline, so... We'll see if uh, Kata Corp can uh, take advantage of this. Maybe they, maybe, oh, he's going to roll. Here comes, uh, Mike is going to roll on it. So he get his own point. And it looks like he's going to be short on this. It's going to be a short ball there. So it's still AVV's point. They're trying to hold up on the frame with, uh, with Paul and John still having a ball. So interesting note. Uh, Luch, that um, Paul, Bill, and John, they were all pretty good softball players in their day. Correct. <clears throat> for, I don't know, 20 plus years. Yeah, very competitive softball players, and then they kind of got a yeah, an the, itch for bocce. Right. They kind of saw a couple games like, what is this? And kind of got involved a little bit more and more and, and got addicted to it, and, and they're here now. And here they are. <laughs> Isn't that wild? How life changes. And here comes Paul Lewis for a hit. Oh! Look at that ball roll out. Oh, my gosh. Oh, man. Unfortunately, the screen is not giving us the right color here, but I, I think it's red point. I mean, yeah, it definitely looks like one red here. Okay. So ABV still holding point. I understand the play by Paul right there. He wanted to hit it, those collection of three balls, get them out. Right. So he can get maybe two, three on that, maybe potentially four. But instead, he had moved the Pauline out to the back wall. So we'll see if John can uh, take advantage. And try to get one out of this. It looks like he got it. Yeah, it looks like he came down. Yeah, very nice roll. Six two five ABV. And for record, there I would I would say ABV has got to be happy with the result of just one point for Katakor because that could have been four points the yeah. other way. Yeah, crazy things happen when you hit that Pauline. <clears throat> right. Balls get knocked around. So yeah, it, it, I'm sure they're happy with walking away with a point in their favor. But definitely an opportunity for Akata Corp, but only one on it, so they still hold Pauline as uh, we go in the next inning. And Bill, uh, with his point, look at this ball right here. It's got the speed on it. A little bit more, and whoo! Guy's a machine. What a point by Bill right there. I think they, I think you should check him. They should, they should, they should do some PED on him. <laughs> <laughs> do some testing for PEDs on Bill. And here comes Croach. Bang! Gets the ball. What a hit there. Oh, look at that right there. <laughs> hit everything. Ball, Pauline. <laughs> and look at that. He comes in, and he's right by the Pauline now. Now Paul Luce's <clears throat> turn. Ooh, hits the Pauline. Right back to the green. <laughs> Maybe not. 
Yeah, it's still red. I think he was pointing to the red, red ball. So it looks like Paul Lewis went for the shot there, hit the Pauline, it ricocheted off the back wall, came uh, about a, a foot or two off. Now they're trying to figure out if it's uh, who has the point. Your husband Mike. From you just seen the you know, the fans in the stands, young children watching it. Definitely, uh, like I said before, the sh Short Street Bocce Club's got a watch party over there, so I'm sure they're uh, cheering their yeah. team on. It's and, and definitely, the guys wanted uh, to give like a, a shout out to uh, Joe Chapone. I wanted to thank him, you know, for what everything he's done at the club and done for those guys and. He's been helping those guys out and kind of made everything kind of happen for them. And it's just a team. Okay. It's the king. All right, so it's ABB on. up 6-5 over Coda Corp. They're looking at what their next shot is going to be. Taking a, taking a little powwow here in the middle of the court. 188 Ohio Comp proudly serves Ohio's employers and injured workers. They commit their resources and staff to provide exceptional customer service aggressive medical case management, and quality health care focused on an early and safe return to work. Serving over 60,000 employers, 1-888-OHIO-COMP aggressively manages workers' compensation claims to ensure quality, cost-effective medical treatment, and return to work services. Call 1-888-OHIO-COMP to see how they can help your business. Louise Seifert is an active agent with Remax, bringing over 40 years of experience representing buyers and sellers on a day-to-day -day basis all across Northeast Ohio. She provides exceptional real estate services to ensure you feel confident with your decision to hire her. Louise consistently sells several houses a month, and this experience in real estate gives her a competitive edge over most other agents in the area. Louise is a firm believer that if you work hard, you can play hard. If you're looking for Italian food and specialty items, you'll want to check out Alessi's of Shoregate for those things you just can't find anywhere else. Father and son, Antonio and Paolo Guerreri, both members of our club, will give you the personal service and the best quality on the east side of Cleveland. They have a large selection of imported food as well as homemade pasta dishes, pizza, salads, and wine. You'll love their bakery too for fresh baked Italian bread and pastries. Check out their Facebook page for weekly specials, Aleshies of Shoregate. MCR, Marketing Communications Resources, is your communication partner, including print, mail, creative, strategy, and data. MCR is committed to providing clients with an excellent customer service experience and highly competitive rates that influence ROI. They know that your constituents want to hear from you, and they make it possible through a wide range of direct marketing strategies and services personalized to fit your needs. Owned by club member Dominic Puno, we thank them for printing our program book and posters again this year. Since the first store opened its doors in Middleburg Heights, Ohio in 1979, Marks has been focused on offering customers the lowest possible prices on family essentials. The freshest produce, premium meats, fresh jelly meats and cheeses, health and beauty, our famous closeout aisle, and so much more. Marks is Ohio owned and operated and committing to giving back to the communities we serve. Shop fresh, shop local, shop Marks. Okay. That's all right. Hey, it was your idea to go to commercial. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You know I'm just teasing you, David. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, what, 
what a what a hunk. <laughs> hunk of what? I don't know, but a hunk. <laughs> there you go. And look at that. We got a ball off the back wall trying to come in. It looks like ABV trying to capitalize here. And it looks to be only. Yeah, ABV grabbed two there. Two points. Be eight five ABV. All right, so eight five ABV. I know you missed a couple of the uh, shots during the commercial break, but um, I, I won't say it was nothing crazy exciting, but they, you know, they threw their balls or they got the points, and that's where we stand now. Eight, eight five. ABV and uh, thanks to our our viewers online, Joe and Santa. Ooh, Tom's first point there is uh, well short, and um, not the way you wanted to start this frame. Frankie D, yeah, thanks, Frank. It was a nice run today. Appreciate that. Now here comes Joe. Bill's ball. It's got the it's got the line. Let's see if you can hold it. That's a pretty decent ball there. Yeah, Michelle De Francisco. Rooting for ABV. Ian Walsh. Here comes Mikey Fabata trying to point and uh, please tell the commentator it. that it's Coda, not Cata. Coda. It's Coda. Yeah. Yeah. Right, Coda. That's what I thought we were saying, but <clears throat> this is game one, uh, Anthony Continenza. Game one of a potential two games. And Dan Novello joined us. Russ Miraglio, of course, I mentioned earlier. Thanks everyone for chiming in and watching the finals at the Cleveland Challenge Cup of Bocce, the 37th. All right, Such here goes event. Coach for a hit. Hey, ooh. Got Hits it there. And hung around. Look at that right there. But that was ABV's third ball. Of course, they got three points now. You can see in her screen, you got Coda Corp's uh, green ball in the back. But not Mike now is just going to come in uh, and roll. Here's Joe Strangis. Let's go Short Street, he's screaming out. <laughs> of course, in writing with the exclamation points. Ooh. Oh, Mike's ball just touches. <clears throat> and uh, just clipped the uh, ABV's ball and fell to the left. So it looks like ABV is still holding point as Paul goes uh, mid-court to discuss what he exactly wants to do. Trying to figure out the distance of where he needs to point this thing in. Could be a possible debate if they want to go off the wall, just straight at it. But I think the, definitely the play here is to, to point. you got to get this in here. It's enough room to steal the point and put the, put the pressure back on ABV. Looks like ABV's holding two here. Yeah, it does look that way, Frank. But with two points. I'm pointing this ball in. I would think so. We got to get on this pile in now. I'm not sure what all the discussion is about, but yeah. They were talking about a potential shot at the Paulino. Yeah. Well, obviously, they, they decided against that. I think it was probably a wise call. Here goes Anthony and Kathy Farinacci leaving for the evening. And I kind of understand that play call if they're trying to discuss about the Pauline, but it's definitely important. You want to get the point here and force ABV to throw their last ball out. 
now you can kind of discuss a little bit more of what you want to do after Dennis throws. Do you want to hit the Pauline? Do you want to go deep? Because now ABV discussing now, do we want to put a ball in the back possibly? Yeah. I, I mean, you know, Dennis can do either one. I mean, he's a great pointer. He's a, even a better shooter. Uh, but I would think he would hit that out and then let Paul roll in. You just got to be worried if he sticks around, then it's gonna they're going to be going for the Pauline there. Yeah, possibly, yeah, yeah. I'm sure it'll be part of the discussion, that's for sure. Yeah, he's going to hit it. And then it's fires. He got it. Uh-oh. Another ball went with it. And he hit it. So it appears that, obviously, the, the closest red ball is the point. Oh, oh they hit ball. that red ball out. Ball okay. Like nice yeah. shot by Paul. Stuck around. Two points for Coda there. It's going to be 8-7 eight, eight. ABV. 7 ABV. All right. So nice frame there by Coda Corp. They keep hanging around. Way to go, Luch. You got that right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, 8 7. ABV over Coda Corp. Cut that lead down to one. I'm sure the uh, the fans at the uh, Short Street Bocce Club had a little uh, clapping going on a moment ago. I'm sure it's a, it's a big cheering section, too. They said it was about uh, 100, 180 to 200 members at the club. Really nice. That's nice. So it's a nice membership there. Now if we can get them to do that in Rome when we go over there, <laughs> right? Broadcast. <laughs> Have a watch party here at the INA. Some vino, some cheese. It looks like we got a switch up. Looks like uh, Mikey oh. Ferbati just first pointed, but his ball is long. Bill's first ball just about two feet past, but... I wonder why they changed up like that. I mean, Dom's, Dom seemed to be pointing okay. But now they're discussing now what they want to do, if they want to uh -huh. roll. There's so, Benny Giuliano. I've, uh, hey, Benny, how are you, buddy? Seen you a long time. Nice to see your name on here. Yeah, Bob the Builder no longer builds. Bob sold his building business. <laughs> and here comes Dom for a point. To try to steal it. And he's got the distance. He does. Great ball by Dom right Very there. Nice. All right, uh, Dawn is rooting for her uh, her dad, Paul Lewis, for that last shot that Paul had. Welcome, Dawn. Thanks for uh, tuning us in. Oh, what a shot by Paul right there on the Pauline. So he squirted the Pauline out. There's another good shot by Dawn's dad, <laughs> Paul Lewis Jr. All right, Croach. I don't see any measuring stick in his ear, so we're going to have to use a tape measure today. <laughs> oh, what a good group of guys, man. It was just nice to see everybody this weekend, Luch. You know, it's been so long, even though it's been little tournaments here and there. Right. It's just so nice to have, have everyone back here. And I mean, I, so many faces that I recognize, I just couldn't remember all the names. <laughs> it's just been too long. Not to mention on, you know. Away, guys. Okay. Oh, man. Oh, thank you. Yeah, oh. Here, I'll pass one over yeah, to the loose. Okay. Thank you. Well, here comes Dennis's ball. Off the side wall, off the back wall. Look at that ball right there. Wow. Very nice. What a ball by Dennis right there. Who are, who are these from? Arch, who are they from? Argy. Who are they from? Uh, Tapestry. Tapestry. Tapestry Secret Living. Yeah. I gave her some money because she said it goes to the old Okay, and here comes John. So Tapestry Senior Living just gave us some sandwiches, and so we want to say thank you very much. Thank, thank you for you. being a vendor here at the uh, 37th Cleveland Challenge Cup of Bocce. We appreciate it. All right, goes John for a hit. Oh, hit that red ball. Not the ball he was aiming for. I wonder if they have any bottles of wine, Larry, uh, that they want to give away. <laughs> 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 Maybe a charcuterie board later on. <laughs> so now uh, with John's hit, there's two balls of uh, Coda Corp's ball to the right. You have one of AB ball, ABV balls to the right. You have Dennis's ball just near the Pauline. So uh, Mike Seraph now is lining up to point to try to either steal this or try to cover up a... Dino. Tino Emmanuel, how you doing? Well, if you want to get Luciano on ESPN, you're going to have to be oh. his, 
You have to be his agent, man. He's looking for one. You open? Are they hiring at ESPN? Might have to apply. Uh, yeah, you're going to have to look into that. I think Tino can look into that for you. Now, he's a, he's a fireman now, so he doesn't have much oh. to do during the day. <laughs> Just kidding, Tino. Congratulations, by the way. And look at that ball right there by Croach. He does a sidewall, back wall, comes off that back wall, rolls right on in, kind of the same way Dennis did, and that's two points for ABV. Very nice. They, they, they kind of needed that. They were get the momentum back a little bit. Hey, thank you, Russ. Appreciate the uh, the uh, words of encouragement for uh, our run to fourth place this weekend. It's a lot of fun. And you were first point all weekend, correct, Bob? Yeah. Any oh. shots you made this weekend? What's that? Any shots? Did you, you shoot any balls this weekend? No. No, I didn't. Have, I, I didn't shoot one. <laughs> I kind of miss it actually. Uh, but hey, when you when you have guys like Dan Trepepe and he goes Paul Lewis. Oh, hits the ball. Dom's ball out. What a shot there. Dan was amazing this weekend. I mean, some of the shots he made were nothing short of spectacular. I mean, he played his heart out. We all did. But I mean, Dan, some of Dan's shots were amazing. And here comes Dom now. Look at Dom's ball. Oh, just touched the pile in, but nice goes past time. it. So they went back to uh, Dom leading, right? No, of Mike. Mike, Mike for, Mikey Ferbata let off the inning. Okay. Paul Lewis with the hit, and then now Dom with his point. Todd Urban, Latessa, thank you, Todd. Appreciate it. Trying to do a good job for everybody. And here comes Dom now for his hit. Second hit back-to-back -back innings. Shoots. Gets the Pauline. Pauline goes to the back wall. Chris Chemlewski, it was nice to see you this weekend. Thanks for coming down. It's always good to see you, brother. Lexi Bertrand didn't make it. That's too bad, Lexi. I know you'd have loved to have been here. You and your, your hubby. Paul Kalikia, thank you. Glad you enjoyed the tournament. You got another measurement here, trying to figure out who's got the point. All right. So we get uh, Chris coming down with Ollie. Take a break. All right. We're going to go to a break. We'll be right back. Hang in there while they do this measurement, and we'll let you know what happens when we come back. Mr. Excavator is a family-owned and operated excavating contractor headquartered in Kirtland, Ohio, with a regional office in Columbus, Ohio, that is adept at handling all facets of site development and road work. With over 50 years of experience, a versatile fleet of well-maintained and reliable earth-moving equipment, and a resourceful pool of knowledgeable, skilled labor, we can handle a wide range of excavation projects in Ohio and neighboring states. For more information, go to www.mrexcavator.com. Whether it's a major flood, fire, or mold remediation, Service Master by Disaster Recon is your go-to team for any size job, any day or time. With over 70 team members and headquartered on the wycliffe willowick border, we are ready to assist 24-7. Service Master by Disaster Recon, restoring peace of mind since 2009. Contact Greg Dennison, President of Service Master by Disaster Recon, for 24 7 emergency response at 440 918 1523. Large loss recovery experts. Second year as stage sponsor is Hesh Sagafi of Liberty Home Mortgage, a local lender that is honest, responsive, and provides answers quickly educates clients about the various loan products and helps them through the process to qualify for a loan that meets their needs. Works closely with real estate agents to get a deal closed on time. Contact Hesh Shagafi of Liberty Home Mortgage at 216-780-1103. Death, greed, control, undue influence, second marriage, evil siblings. If you have been disinherited from a will, from a trust, from life insurance and or from bank accounts, call Russ Miraglio, Reminger Company, LPA, at 216-430-2157. He will fight to recover money for you. Voted super lawyer and best lawyer by his legal peers. Russ Miraglio, Reminger Company, LPA. Phone number is 216-430-2157.
okay? Yeah, okay. Right. Hey, Frank, can you hear me right now? Yes. Okay, when we come back, I'm going to go to you and, and, and kind of ask you, you know, what you think the strategy is going to be moving forward with the score of 10-7. You know, you've been around ABB a long time, not as much the Coda Corp, but yeah, maybe you can give a little input. Sure. Okay. Green one net measurement, by the way, so okay. for when we come back. So ABB got the measurement. The one the measurement. No, Coda won the measurement. Oh, Coda did. Okay. Frank, is that is that green point or still ABB? It's one point coda right now. Okay, we're back. We're back live. And um, Looch, you, you kind of wrote down what happened while we were gone to commercial. Right. Well, I'll fill them in right after this shot by Crow. Let's see what okay. he does. He fires. Oh, off the back wall. Gets that green. Pops right out. Gets the point for AVB. Great shot. What a hit by Croach right there. So to kind of bring you guys back in, that's one point for ABV. Now it's 11 to 7. What you didn't get a chance to see was Dennis had rolled his point. It went off the sidewall and just kind of glazed the back wall, came in for the point, and then Bill rolled his point. Was It was no good. Mikey came in for his point, and it touched their ball and just slid it in for the point. So they had it, and then Croach went in and shot it and uh, blew Oops. it up a little bit. So now uh, ABV with the one point, 11 to 7, and now Mikey Verbata is leading off the frame. All right, so keeping in mind, once again, that ABV needs to win twice. Uh, they're coming out of the loser's bracket. Uh, Coda is coming out of the winner's bracket, so they only need to win this game. Um, if they were to win this game, there would not be a game two. Uh, so at any rate, uh, ABV needs to win twice. And uh, Mike Clayton. Hello, Mike Clayton. How you doing, buddy? Thanks for thanks for watching. Bob Lovell Jr., Alan Ellie. There's yeah. a point by uh, Dom right there. Yeah, you know, Al mentions, you know, some hey, maybe next year we can show the game in the corner while we're while we're going into the commercial. I said, oh, I'll have, I'll have a talk with that uh, David Sullivan guy. See if he can do anything about that. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> it's all good. No, 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 no. And here comes Bill for a point, trying to steal it from Dom, and he's, he's going to. What a point right there. Very nice. That was Billy. Nice ball by Bill. Yeah. That guy is a point machine, man. Every time I see that guy play, he's always around the point. He's making Croach work this uh, in these finals. He's not as good as you, Luch, but he's good. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Se Mr. And Mrs. Severino standing in the fires. Oh. oh, took the peach fuzz off the ball. Did he get it out enough? Just looks like it. Huh? Touched it. I think it's out enough. But it's going to be enough. So he uh, he did what he needed to do. So ABV has the point. Looks to be good enough. But he's not happy about that one. He wanted to get that uh. 
blast that one out. Hey, so uh, Frank, uh, our, our courtside commentator, you know, you, you've been around ABB a long time. You know, these guys need to win two games. Uh, you know, besides obviously, you know, uh, you know, getting the most points. What, what do you think ABB is talking about strategy-wise at this point? I think part of it for them is just staying, you know, under control. A lot of game left. Um, you know, they switched pointers. They got down on themselves a little bit, but you see Croach and the other guys picking each other up and, you know, telling everybody still a long way to go, and they're winning. So, they're, uh, you know, even if they're struggling pointing right now, they're winning the game and just got to keep after it. Yeah, it's, it's kind of amazing because these, these guys typically don't get rattled. I was surprised to see them change, you know, putting uh, Mike for about a first pointing, but they went right back to it, and they're, they're doing fine again. Here comes Dennis to point. Possibly maybe lay on and maybe bump out that green, but ooh, ooh a little strong there. So Dennis's ball goes long. Caught a corp. It's holding point. And here comes John looking to capitalize on that, and we'll try to get two here. As he lines up, throws. It's got some speed on it. Oh, and it's going to come in. Looks like oh. it. I can't tell really from here. Great ball. It's in front. Yeah, they held up two fingers. Two? Dennis said yes. So All it looks right. like two points. Great ball there, John. All right, we got some of the New Yorkers uh, making some comments online. You got Jason Wild and uh, Bobby Seraf. He's, he's uh, rooting for his uh, Uncle Mike. Seraf, that's... Uh, Obviously on the team here for Coda Corp. So we got another uh, two-point inning. Love Seems like the, these innings are going two by two by two. And Bill starts off the inning here with a nice point in front. It looks like to put uh, he's going to put Croach back in the shooting position again. And here goes Coach lining up. Here comes a shot. Ooh. Hmm. And a miss there by Croach split between them. Very rare miss at that. So now uh, we'll see what ABV can do here. Dennis is going to line up, I think, to hit again. Let's try to get this thing out. comes his shot. Oh, and he misses also. Wow. How often do you see those two miss? Wow, we got back-to-back -back misses by Croach and Dennis there. So ABV's going to have to try to do some damage control and we put it on Mikey and uh, Dom to put in some good points. Well, hey, these guys are good, but they're not perfect. Everyone makes mistakes, and that's what's great about any team in, in the finals. And... Look at Mikey's ball pick here. Pick each other up. Ooh, it's short, but th that's a good ball, though. Good defensive ball, yeah. Put that in front. That's still a tough point. We'll see what Dom can do. If Dom can keep out in front or take his point. Yeah, he could be a little bit more aggressive and try to steal it. And he comes off the wall. Oh. Uh, mm. Looks to get stuck up up there, but, but his ball's in front also, so he kind of takes away that lane from the wall. Right, right, right. So that's kind of the... The part of the strategy is you got to be in front. you got to play defense sometimes when the inning's not going yeah, your yeah, way. Yeah, absolutely. So now even though Coda uh, Corp has two balls, they're going to have to figure out how are we going to point these in here. There was a couple three times balls. today that you know, we had this situation come up and we said, hey, let's just play defense, keep it to one, let's not do anything crazy. Let's not hit, try and hit that and get some crazy ricochet and give them three. Right. So playing defense is definitely part of the game. So we got three balls in the back. So Paul is going to try to open this thing up and hit Dom's ball out. He does. Wow. What oh. a shot. Unbelievable. What a shot by Paul Lewis right there. Very nice, Mr. Lewis. Great so, shot. Everyone giving the, yeah. <laughs> the rock and knuckles. <laughs> ABB is giving them all knuckles. And hey, listen, there's a good shot. He was able to get Dom's ball out and Mikey's to push aside. So now... It looks like it's going to be four here for uh, Coda Corp. Well, this is a big inning right here. And here comes John to finish it off. It should be 13-11 when it's all said and done. Yeah, that was a huge wow. shot. Four banger. 13-11, Coda. 
And now we got a big, that's a big momentum shift right there. That's a, that's a four banger there, Bob. Yeah, that, that's, uh, wow. Like I said, it's 13-11 now. And, uh, boy, that changes the game a little bit. And we're getting to that back half of the game right now. We're going up to 16, so it's getting crucial here. Yeah, and that, that's a good point too, Luch. I mean, we've been playing 14 all weekend, like you mentioned early in the broadcast, but <clears throat> the finals games are going to be to 16. So, uh, Coda Corp only needs three more. And ABB obviously needs five. And here comes Bill's ball to start the inning. Just uh, slides off that sidewall. It was in front, so it's going to see if Mikey could steal it. And here comes his ball, heading to the wall. Just grazes Got it. it. And nice look at that ball. ball by Mikey for about a, That's a big point ball right there. Nice ball, Mike. Well done. Well, well done. Everybody's sweating like a maniac up there. <laughs> I think I went through like, you know, eight shirts this weekend. <laughs> I do a lot of laundry this week. Yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. I mean, I went home. Yeah, I think our last game was like 11.30 last night by the time I got home. Wow. Probably like 12.30. I was trying to peel that shirt off. It was so stuck on to me from all the wet and moisture. Jeez, oh, man. And here comes Paul Lewis for a shot. There it hits. Oh. He missed. Just misses it to the right. Because he was trying to slice it as opposed to hitting it square, obviously. He didn't want to touch that Pauline, so he was trying to clip it. I'll tell you what, Luch. I mean, you know, being here all weekend long in this heat, these guys, it's not easy being upright right now. No. You know, and playing some more. I mean, thank God the weather has cooled down, but nonetheless, I give them all the credit in the world. So a nice ball by Mike. But, Frank, ABV still has that one? Yeah, ABV is holding point. So now ABV is in control of this inning, so Coda Corp is going to have to try to figure out how to kind of play a little uh, little defense here also. There's Rocky and Aldino sitting in the crowd, taking in a, uh, a good title match here. And here comes John with the last ball. Let's see where he puts this. So he could be a little strong here, so what it, let's see the speed on it. Oh, oh. it lays in that green. Uh, man, I can't Is that enough, Frank, for the bump up? Yeah, he gave the thumbs up. Looks like he got it. Wow, great bump. See, that's important, too. When you have two balls in front like that, you got to know when you're pointing in to be a little bit strong. Give it a little bit more. Be a little bit more aggressive on that. You don't want to be short. Short's no good. Yeah, short doesn't do anything for you. So nice play by uh, John there to give it a little bit more and bumped up to... Their balls. Another Serpentini Chevrolet measurement by Oliver Marcon. Oh, he's got the uh, antenna this time. The what? The antenna. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they had the tape measure the last couple of times. I mean, they ran out of cigarettes, I guess. <laughs> yeah, Oliver's been here all weekend, directing the, uh, helping to direct the uh, tournament bracket board in the back. Looks pretty close. He's going back and forth. Head official. Yeah. Head official, Oliver Marcon. And he's been doing this for lots of years for the uh, Wycliffe INA. Oh, he's going back to this again. So oh, it looks like uh, this is tight. Oh, man, it is tight. This is going to be a big call. He's calling it green. So it's green point right now. Coda Corp's point. So, I mean, those balls are on top of each other. You you got three balls in the back. You're going to try to blow this thing up. And here comes Crow trying to do that right now. Get out. He gets them both out. What a hit right there. <laughs> wow, what a hit. <laughs> Good shot, Crow. Well, it's a perfect play right there by Crouch. I mean, those balls are pretty much touching each other. Yeah. You hit it square. They're both getting out of there. Yeah, he hit it right, too, because many times you see guys hit that, but they only hit one ball or Hit on the side or something. It doesn't really do the damage that that one did. Uh -oh. oh, no. Right back to it. Oh. Ouch. Oh, my. Domovani right there just tried to. They're going for their own point, but it came off too much and landed on 
on the green ball and pushed it up now. And, uh, let's see what they do here. So ABV. So do you roll in or do you, I mean, I, I can't really see the whole field of play, but do you roll in and just kind of keep this to one again? I mean, it's getting down to the point where, you know, they only need three. This is definitely going to be a big decision. Frank, what are they talking about out there as far as options go? Yeah, it looks like they're going to try to come off the sidewall and play into that green and either bump it so that it pushes the Pauline towards their red yeah. or just clears it out completely and maybe gives them a couple. That makes sense. Obviously, hitting something here is not going to do anything. No, it's touching that Pauline. It's way too dangerous. Let's see what Dennis can do here. Try to save the frame. And if he get this out, it, I mean, if that ball goes far enough, it could be three. Let's we'll see what he does. So he's going to roll to the wall. He touches it. Mm. Uh, well, didn't come off the way he wanted it no, to. He hit the wall a little bit too soon. See, on, on those balls, Luch, what I've learned this weekend is you almost don't need to hit the wall on, on most of these. Some of them just naturally curve off that wall. So one for a... Uh, a you know, one point Coda Corp as they extend their lead 14 to 11. Now they're on a 5 0 run heading to the next inning. So ABV, it's kind of getting to the. Do or die. Yeah, it's getting to that point now. Yeah. Well, this is kind of where they, they play their toughest, quite frankly. Yeah, and just a reminder, our championship game is to 16. All of our other games were to 14. Kota Corp. Kota Corp. Kota Corp looking for their first championship. So they're on the fringe of it. They're right there. Rod Ritz wants to know who the players are from Lockport. Can you tell them who they are, uh, Luch? Uh, yes, it's Bill, Mike, and John. So Paul Lewis, Bill Rosenberg, Mike Seraf, and John Valella. Yep. Uh, Paul Lewis is from uh, Tuc the Tukulana Club. Okay. So just uh, that answers your question, Rod. All right, so we got a short pop lean throw. So it is um, Coda Corp. As Bill throws the first ball. Ooh, played a Ooh. short one. Oh, my goodness. So it's a... Uh, I think the, the hand came a little tighter it, around the neck. Yeah. It, <laughs> it happens at this point in the game. So, Frankie, is this mm. Mikey Forbata threw the Pauline? Was it an illegal Pauline throw? Yeah, we had an illegal Pauline throw, and then Mikey placed it short there uh, intentionally. So that kind of uh, trying to switch things up here. So they changed uh, leadoff pointers again, and uh, Mike went instead of Dom. So Bill goes short. Mikey's ball falls left and is still open so Mike is going to try to see if he can get the point but ABV trying to go short to kind of switch things up a little bit and Mike's ball is long too so Dom's going to come in for a point so currently no uh, close points here comes Dom now and Dom's ball he's in, he's in a little long he's but it's going to be the point that. All right, well. Oh, they're going to have John come and oh, point instead. Okay, he's going to point. I'm surprised. Usually Paul wants to hit those. Here comes John's ball. Speed looks good. Ooh, I don't know about that. Yeah, uh, Just a little short. Still corta, short, corta. Huh, right? What do you think, Frank? Are, are they, uh, like, is ABV's ball a foot away, 15 inches? We can't tell. About 20 inches. 20, okay. Okay, so it was still ABV's point. Paul Lewis goes for a shot and hits out Dom's ball. And now it's uh, Croach now. Yeah, this is definitely want to discuss this and make sure they're doing what they need to do here. So they got to figure out now. Coda, Coda Corp. Coda is out Corp. of balls. Yeah. Uh, it's out of balls. Yeah. Uh, so now ABV trying to take advantage of this. They're going to see. Looks like Croach is lining up for a hit. I guess at this point, you've got to hit that. You don't want to be fighting it for the next two balls. Oh, 
All right, there's one. Nice hit there, Coach. Got the front one out. I'll just roll in. Now it opens it up. So Dennis is going to try to finish off the inning. Well. Let's see if he can get the point. They're going to need this Pauline back. You don't want this to go 15 and have be a match point. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm sure maybe some of the fans do. So this is the big ball right here. That's one of the big, biggest things, too, about Bocce is having control of the Pauline. Oh, yeah. And a lot of times, oh, yeah. you know, when you give up the Pauline or you lose the Pauline, the other team gets it, you know, it's hard to get it back. It's not easy. you got to be able to, to hold that Pauline, control the frames over and over again consist consistently. Well, if you're controlling the Pauline and you're putting a ball within six. Oh, he went inches, to hit the Pauline. Oh, yes, he did. Where did Pauline go? Right side? Where's that Pauline, Frank? Yeah, it's down in the corner. It's going to be one point for ABV. Wow. Wow. All right, 14-12. That was a little bit a little scary there, Bob. Yeah, it was a little risky. But, you know, when you're down 14-11 in a game like this and you got to win two, you, you got to go after it. And when a guy's like Dennis, I mean, right. let him do what he does best, right? Right. You just got to, I mean... For them, that pile only went right to where that corner, where they had the red ball. And then look at that point right there. Wow, that's a great point. Vinny Latessa, thank you, Vinny. Thanks for uh, there goes Paul Lewis now watching the shoot. broadcast. He's lining up. His shot. Boom! What a hit there by Paul. Me, you even got like sound effects and everything. Luke. Yep. Holy man. Not pre recorded or nothing. Jesus, that was good, man. <laughs> no extra charge, Bob. Huh? No extra charge. That's free? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> but ABV's holding point, so now Bill is going to roll in. That was a great sound effect right there, Looch. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. <laughs> Look at that point there. There it is. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Looch. No, oh, thanks, Bob. Yeah. Too. Thank you so much. <laughs> and here goes Croach. Bang! What a hit there by Croach. Yeah, uh, they're not laying down, man. Wow. These guys don't know how to lay down. Paul and Croach just going back and forth, hit for hit. Look at them. They're just giving a little love to each other right now. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Respect for shooters. So now, uh, John, uh, Mike rolls in his ball. All right. So, hey, uh, Diana Marie Luzzi. Luzzi, I know you're in from Arizona. I was expecting to see you down here this weekend, but uh, like you did in Arizona when I was there not long ago, you kind of stood everybody up. So anyway, I'm kidding. Hello. Thank you for joining the broadcast. All right, here comes Dom for his point. A little toss. It looks a little strong. It looks to be long. Wow. Who, uh, who threw that ball? Dom of any. So he's long on that one. Yeah, yeah, I've done that too, man. It doesn't feel good for the rest of the team when you throw a ball like that because you know it's, it just hurts everybody. Here comes Dennis trying to steal it. Oh, no. And he's going to be short. He didn't want to go flying by. Coda's got a ball for game point. Yeah, this so this, uh, this could be it for the... Cleveland Challenge Cup of Bocce right here. Coda Corp is going for two to win Dennis, their... Uh, Dennis saw uh, you know, Dom's ball go flying by, and he said, okay, well, let me slow this one down. And here's the roll. This could be it. That's Off it. the there wall. It is. And that is it. Coda Corp. Wow. Great ball there. And John, uh, John finishes it off and gets Coda Corp their first championship of the Cleveland Challenge Cup of Bocce. Congratulations. Uh, to everyone, Paul, Bill, Mike, John, congratulations. Uh, it was nice to have you guys here at the 37th Cleveland Challenge Cup of Bocce. And uh, gosh, hey, we'll look right forward back. to We'll be right back. Orlando Donsade Private Funeral Home, serving the city of Wycliffe and surrounding communities in Lake Cuyahoga and Joga County since 1954 takes great pride in showing care and compassion for the many families they serve and will work tirelessly to provide you with a beautiful 
lasting tribute to your loved one. They have a great range of resources to support you, not only today, but in the weeks, months, and years to come. Please call owner and funeral director Anthony Previtt at 440-943-2466 for your family's funeral, cremation, and prearrangement service needs. McNulty Construction LLC is a family-owned business that has been operating since 1994. Specializing in roofing, siding, windows, kitchen, and bath remodeling, they provide high-quality materials and service to every customer in a professional and timely manner and at a fair and competitive price. Need a commercial roof? McNulty Construction does that too. Visit our website at McNultyConstructionLLC.com. Contact McNulty Construction for all your home remodeling needs. The Sherwin-Williams Company delivers the best in paint and coatings products to the world. Every day, our more than 60,000 employees provide the energy and experience to build on our track record of success, enabling us to innovate and grow in new and exciting ways. With our people as the foundation of our company, we offer industry-leading innovation, value-added service and expertise, and differentiated distribution to our growing base of professional, industrial, commercial, and consumer customers. Sherwin-Williams, bringing color to the world for more than 150 years. Ladies, looking for a place to freshen up your look? Check out Amici Beauty, located at 34500 Chardon Road, Suite 3 in Willoughby Hills. They offer infrared sauna, hairstylists, nail techs, waxing and brow tint, and lash lifts, all in a relaxing atmosphere. You can find them on the web at AmiciBeautyLLC.com. Everybody knows Coke. They are a total beverage company. From their passion for what people want, they bring people everywhere, more of the brands they love. From one brand to over 500, that's Coca-Cola and so much more. And welcome back, everybody. Uh, Thank you, guys. We have uh, Mikey Ferbata speaking from ABV. And that was Mikey Ferbata from ABV as the team receives their second place medals. Getting the congratulations from Charles Albertone and Paul DeSico. So great run by those guys. Nice run. It's not easy to do. Not easy to do. And we had him on the ropes. No, it is not. What a <laughs> run. Ah, nice job. And to beat the defending champion twice in this tournament. Yeah, right. that's right. Yeah, they that's beat correct. Him. You're right. Beat him in the first game, 16 to 14, and now beat him in this championship, 16 to 12. And I just want to make a note to these guys. What an awesome run they made. They they were down nine to 11, and then went on a seven to one run to. To win the championship, that's pretty incredible. Especially against ABV, that's not easy to do, Luke. Right. Well, you know, Coda came to play as did ABV, and this year is Coda's turn. A beautiful trophy from the Wycliffe Italian American Club. Yeah, and then uh, Tell them Frank is gonna try to catch up. And they're bringing uh, the trophy, the cup, back to bring it to New York. We're gonna try and have uh, Frank Gambathies. You know, talk to uh, Coda Corp and get some comments about the uh, the match. And this is the first time that a New York team has won since 2008. Wow. So it's been a while, so that's coming back to New York. You think you'll have luck down there, Frank, grabbing uh, some of the guys? Yeah, I'm going to try to grab the captain here. Okay. So uh, I don't know if Paul's going to do the Paul Lewis from Rome, New York. I don't know if he's going to start singing... It's coming, Rome. It's coming, Rome. <laughs> it's coming, Rome. <laughs> uh, oh, they're going to get the old uh, Paul DeSico picture pose. <laughs> but definitely great run by these guys. An undefeated run through the tournament. Oh. Definitely something to be proud about. 
And I'm sure uh, Short Street Bocce Club is just going nuts for these guys right now in the Tucalana Club. Yeah, yeah. They're, I'm sure they they poured a few shots of a grappa. <laughs> <laughs> poured some new vino, and they're all having a good old time. But definitely something to be proud about. There's Charlie Albert, uh, Albertone on the left, the president of the Swiftify and A Club. It's Paul DeSico, the tournament director, who is also a photographer. Getting his shots in. You can see the back of the, of the team now with their Cleveland Challenge Kabobachi t-shirts. Yeah. There we go. Look at that. There's Charles Alberton with the team. There's Frank over there on the sidelines waiting. <laughs> now I'm sure these guys are, the adrenaline's probably coming down a little bit now, and they're probably going to be definitely feeling the whole right, weekend Frank's tomorrow. Uh, looks like Frank's <laughs> getting Paul Lewis right now, I believe. And, yeah, we're going to have a, uh, a post-game interview. Frank is going to talk to those guys. Just get a few words with them, see how they're doing, see how they're feeling. And that's Mike Seraf right there speaking for Coda Corp. Classy guy. Classy guy. All right, guys, I'm joined down here with uh, John Valella from Coda Corp. Uh, John, can you talk to us a little bit about what it was like running through this tournament? Well, our team was uh, really focused. We don't have any all-stars, but everyone did their job every single game, and we just poked along and met some great opponents, and in the finals beat the best team of the whole decade, ABV. Uh, talk a little bit about that. You guys, you guys managed to beat them twice in this tournament. Uh, can you talk a little bit about ABV and what kind of challenges they pose to you guys? Well, just knowing, watching them play, I, I mean, very few teams have, seem to have any chance against them. They just destroy teams. And, you know, we just plugged along. We didn't do anything different than we did the whole tournament. Each guy played a little bit of a role, and, and we put some pressure on them, and we continued playing like we did the whole tournament. And how, how do you guys think you managed to stay so composed and just managed to run through this gauntlet like this, especially in this heat? All of these teams, there's so many good teams here. I know you guys know that. What, I mean, talk to me a little bit about that. Well, all of us kind of thought that, you know, we know we're, we're a competitive team, but we're certainly not one of the elite teams in our tournament. No one probably would have picked us to finish real high. So we didn't really have anything to lose, and we just continued doing our job through the whole tournament. And how long has your team, I know the group, how long have you guys been playing together? Well, the three of us have played down here uh, six consecutive years, and we added Mike this year, who's been out of bocce for almost 20 years. He came back a year ago, okay. and he's just, he's just, he was our, 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 a great fit for us. That's, uh, that's pretty cool to, see, uh, to hear. Um, anything else that you guys uh, take away from the tournament this year? Just, uh, it's like a fad to think that we, we won first place and to beat the team of the decade, that's, I don't know, they lose two games like every three years, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, it was a great time. Wycliffe was great, treated wonderfully by all the people here. It, it's just a great place. Yeah, that's really great. Uh, guys, that's John Valella. Really, uh, what a great run by Kodakor. I mean, it's just uh, unbelievable. Like you said, they beat ABV twice and just not easy to go through this gauntlet of a tournament undefeated. So great job, guys. Yeah, so good. That was John Valella with Kodakor. And we're going to go to a commercial break. Serpentini Chevrolet is proud to serve residents and guests in Northeast Ohio. They strive to deliver the best car buying experience in the Cleveland area by having the largest selection of Chevrolets in Northeast Ohio and having a large team of friendly and experienced sales, service, and finance professionals. They are thankful that their customers have made them the number one selling Chevy dealer in Northeast Ohio, and they make it their goal to continue delivering unmatched customer service. Minutemen Staffing has been helping companies large and small meet their production challenges for more than 50 years. With a pool of thousands of screened applicants, they can support your company with employees who have the skills needed to get the job done right, ranging from general labor to skilled machine operators. The Minutemen Human Resource System has offices in Illinois, Michigan, Ohio, and Wisconsin, including Cleveland, Chicago, Columbus, Cincinnati, and Detroit. 
For more information, go to www.minutemeninc.com. 188 Ohio Comp proudly serves Ohio's employers and injured workers. They commit their resources and staff to provide exceptional customer service, aggressive medical case management, and quality health care focused on an early and safe return to work. Serving over 60,000 employers, 1888 Ohio Comp aggressively manages workers' compensation claims to ensure quality, cost effective medical treatment, and return to work services. Call 188 Ohio Comp to see how they can help your business. MCR Marketing Communications Resources is your communication partner, including print, mail, creative, strategy, and data. MCR is committed to providing clients with an excellent customer service experience and highly competitive rates that influence ROI. They know that your constituents want to hear from you and they make it possible through a wide range of direct marketing strategies and services personalized to fit your needs. Owned by club member Dominic Puno, we thank them for printing our program book and posters again this year. If you're looking for Italian food and specialty items, you'll want to check out Alessi's of Shoregate for those things you just can't find anywhere else. Father and son Antonio and Paolo Guerreri, both members of our club, will give you the personal service and the best quality on the east side of Cleveland. They have a large selection of imported food as well as homemade pasta dishes, pizza, salads, and wine. You'll love their bakery too for fresh baked Italian bread and pastries. Check out their Facebook page for weekly specials, Aleshi's of Shoregate. Okay, we're back with a uh, quick wrap-up of the game. Uh, Coda Corp uh, took the match 16-12, to and again, they only had to win one time because they came out of the winner's bracket. They didn't lose a game all weekend long. Uh, we had to play them, my team had to play them, and they, they, were, they were a tough customer, that's for sure. So, uh, Luch, ABV, uh, you know, goes down this time, but, you know, gave them a good game. Um, I don't know. I mean, Coda Corp just seemed to keep coming up with the big shots. Right, down down that stretch, yeah, it kind of got to the point where they were down, but they were kept fighting back. You know, the ABV would get two, then they would get two, and back and forth, two, two, and then suddenly it's 9-11, to 11, and uh, Coda Corp went on a 7-1 run to finish the game and get their first championship under their belt. Well, but definitely, uh, ABV is going to be back here, and you know they're going to be you know, back in the uh, Sunday's bracket yeah. fighting for a championship next year. Yeah, this this is it's not going to be easy to swallow. I mean, you know, these guys. I, mean, I, remember, I used to call them the kids, the boys, because they, you know, I've been around them for 15, 20 years, and they, they were obviously just young kids, and they started. But you know, they'll they'll be back, and they'll they'll look for something to uh, to come back into contention and maybe take that title back next year. But we'll see. So, hey, you know, it was nice to have the uh, 37th. Cleveland Challenge Cup of Bocce here from the Wycliffe INA Club. You know, it was hot this weekend. The weather, weather's beautiful right now, unfortunately. I wish it was like that. <laughs> <laughs> Friday and Saturday. Right. Uh, but it wasn't to be. But nonetheless, it was a great time. It was great seeing everybody. Um, you know, and thanks to all of our viewers who watched this um, broadcast online. It definitely. It was definitely, you know, for you guys to tune in, watch, get a chance to see the finals and you know, we appreciate everyone, you know, tuning in and supporting this. Well, I want to also uh, thank the Lake County Visitors Bureau and discover some of Ohio's most popular travel destinations only 20 miles east of Cleveland on the southern shores of Lake Erie. Experience breathtaking landscapes, beaches, outdoor escapes, world-class wineries, national and local heritage sites, and events and festivals for, throughout the year. Whether traveling for business or making memories of family, You'll find an experience what can only be described as remarkable in Lake County. That is from the Lake County Visitors Bureau. And we thank Lake County Visitors Bureau for all that they do thank you. Uh, for the Wycliffe INA. We really appreciate uh, your donations and, and what you guys put into this tournament. Thank you again. And Gina Latessa, thank you. Larry Koval, I know you had a lot to do with this. A lot of work for all these guys. Paul DeSico, uh, Oliver, Frank. Um, you know, all the members at the INA. Yeah, all the members at the INA. Rich Liddy and Don Alvertone and Bobby Lamonica and all Marco the guys. Orlando, Marco Orlando. Marco Orlando, who you know did a lot of work down here, getting everything ready and making improvements and upgrades right. and uh, adding the new benches between the posts. Right. Uh, which was really nice because those things were filled up most of the time. Every time I looked over, they, those things are being sat in. So uh, anything to make it more comfortable. All the all the food vendors. 
uh, that were here. Lucio's and what was the one, the Tapestry? Senior Living. Senior Living, yes. Oh, the old Holly Inn, that's right. Tapestry Senior Living, they brought a sandwich, but they, they came down. And, uh, I mean, obviously, Trevi have, Catering. Uh, Trevi Catering. Corvos. Uh, have their booth down here. Steve always does a phenomenal job. Trevi Catering. They got a huge hall over here on the INA grounds. You have a wedding, you know, a big bash going on. You know, call Steve at Trevi Catering, T R E V I, Trevi Catering. Um, and um, Lucio's, did I mention Lucio's already? Mm -hmm, yeah. Corbo's, Corbo's was down here. Um, just, it, just the whole thing was, it, it was just nice to have it again. Fine Grinds Mobile for the coffee and espressos they had over the weekend. Okay, Fine Grinds, that's right. Forgot about Fine Grinds. Yep. Do, we, do we name, do we call out everybody else? And, uh, this one is Gibaldi's. Oh, yeah, yeah Gibaldi's, yep. yeah. Sorry, Gibaldi's, didn't mean to... Uh, forget about you but uh, it's late <laughs> well, yeah, well, thank you guys so much for coming down and you know everyone appreciates you guys bringing the food and feeding everybody and uh like i said you know thank you for everyone for coming down like, this is really important and it's the club's <laughs> biggest event of the year and we just appreciate everyone coming down supporting and to all the teams that came from out of town they had to travel up here um from far and wide team from rhode island connecticut there's people from maryland uh florida. Team from florida yeah from all over the place kentucky yeah. uh pennsylvania yeah new york i mean so many people coming out of town to this tournament and all the local teams and the teams in ohio from youngstown and from all over the place you know thank you guys for traveling up to wickliffe and playing this tournament it definitely means a lot and you know we're glad to be able to put on something like this for a lot all these teams to compete and and uh to challenge each other and compete for uh the bocce uh the bocce title, the cup of bocce. And, and definitely, last but not least, David Sullivan, um, who put together this entire broadcast. There's myriads of wires and computer equipment and things all running through here. And I'm sorry, I don't even know. What, I forget the name of David's company. Uh, Terrapin Media. What is it? Terrapin Media. Terrapin Media. So if you're looking so. for someone to help you with broadcast or, I mean, it, it does a phenomenal job. Everything was first class. Uh, the video was wonderful. The cameras were wonderful. Everything was perfect. Uh, David and I worked together a couple times doing all the voiceovers. Very patient guy. Um, so anyway, if you ever need anything, uh, Terrapin Media. Uh, so, keep David in mind. So once again, uh, congratulations to Coda Corp. on winning the 37th annual Cleveland Challenge Cup of Bocce, sponsored by Serpentini Chevrolet. And uh, next year's uh, tournament is... Going to be August, 20, August 26th, 27th, and 28th. So yeah. we'll see everybody next year for the 38th annual tournament. So as we get ready and start planning in January for the big one. So uh, on our last thoughts, thank you, everybody, once again, and we appreciate it. And, uh, Congratulations to, to, next year. to Coda Corp. Yep. Uh, winners over ABV, 16 to 12. Nice job, guys. Uh, didn't lose a game. So, hey, my hats are off to you. Uh, congratulations. All right. We'll, All right. We'll see you in uh, we'll see you in a year. Yep. Take care, Bob, <laughs> and uh, thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank you, Luch.